Bristol, Tennessee, world's fastest half mile. And this spring, something new has been added. We're going to get down and dirty in Bristol with NASCAR's Cup cars, first time in 51 years. And look at this surface. They lay down sawdust to protect the concrete, then stockpile dirt from the last dirt race here, some from the campground, some lime-treated clay, and they went all over the region to find just the right red Tennessee clay. I think they found it in Bluff City of Lloyds. More on that later. Rain. Uh, yeah. Uh, so where, where there's dirt, there's mud when it rains. We didn't lose the racetrack, but they had a bunch of farming to do to get it ready for today. Perfect day here in the northeast corner of Tennessee. 72 degrees, full sun, a light breeze, and the trucks have just practiced. So we're going to dive off into the what, for me, is going to be the great unknown. I, I haven't broadcast a dirt track race probably since Jeff ran one. Uh, so, Clint, we're going to turn to you. How do you prepare for this? Well, I think that's a great question, and everybody's different, and everybody has done it differently. We've seen everybody from a dirt late model to a crate late model to modifieds. Last week ran this extravaganza, to say the least. 1,400 cars were entered for that event that they ran last week. Um, but then you have guys that are champions of the sport that have, didn't do anything. But I think that was on purpose, too, because I don't think there is a, a, a right answer to this, but I do think you can learn bad habits. Ah. So, going to be some happy and some not so happy after uh, especially this first practice. I'm happy, Mike. All right. You see this smile? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be grinning. You're going to see my teeth. It is so much fun. We just watched the trucks have a practice. It was so cool to see these vehicles, these stock vehicles, sliding sideways. Can't wait to see the cup cars out there. But you're right, Mike. There's some guys just with a huge grin, are super happy, comfortable at this, looking forward to the challenge. And then there are some that are going to leave here saying, Please get me off the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first practice coming right up. Richard Petty won the last cup race on dirt 51 years ago. Who finished second? The Packer cars are out on the track. Has nothing to do with Green Bay. Uh, it's a bunch of old Crown Victorias, big heavy cars. Those uh, are Michael interceptors, baby. Michael was in one the other day. And... Uh, they packed the track. By the way, Neil Soapy Castles finished second to Richard Petty 51 years ago. Two laps down. Down to the pits, Regan Smith. Well, Mike, I've been confused since I got here as little as I know about dirt racing. You mentioned the Packer cars. I turned around a second ago. They're going the wrong way around the racetrack. It confused me even more. But because I am so confused, I went and found one of the guys that I know knows the dirt racing as good as anybody else, Christopher Bell. As the truck practice we just watched was going on, asked him, how does this track look to you right now? What is it doing? He said it's a very dry, slick racetrack. This is what he anticipated the race would look like when we do this on Sunday for the real thing. This is going to be a very important practice because of that. Most of these teams up and down this garage area the agenda is strictly to get their driver as many laps as they possibly can right here well the cars are cup cars they look like cup cars but there are some subtle dis differences and some not so subtle like where the rubber meets the road larry mcreynolds yeah, Mike, this is a racing slick that we run at every single racetrack that we go to. You can see no tread, just slick. This is the dirt tire that Goodyear is racing here. Now, don't confuse this with a wet weather tire. This is a dirt tire that's made by Goodyear. And you can see this is what they call a block-style tread. And the reason it's designed that way is to grip that dirt. But more than anything, it's to excavate and evacuate the dirt where it doesn't build up in this. So this is a tire a lot like we ran at Eldor with the trucks, but they've changed the construction to make it a little more compliant. The other thing, this is a steel belted radial. This is a bias tire. Guys, we have not run a bias tire in Cup since 1989. <laughs> a lot of things are different. You guys, you look at that block that he was talking about. It's all about the edges on a dirt car or a dirt tire like that. You got to keep those sharp edges on it. That's grip. It's like a razor. Doesn't matter how big your blade is, it's how sharp the edge is. <laughs> and it all determines. Like on a dirt, a regular dirt tire, you'll you'll actually groove and sipe those tires and get more. As the track hardens up, you want more blocks. And we asked, and that is not allowed. Yeah, teams are sure. not allowed. How about this, boys? We got cars on the track. Cars on the track. Cars side by side. Now, Kyle Busch is one of these guys. I see him searching up there, see if there's any grip up high. He's a guy that has a good amount of dirt experience, driving a lot of different dirt cars over the last few years. So I'll be anxious to see him. But then Mark Truex Jr. 
I don't think there's a lot of dirt no. racing in his past. He's doing a lot of following right now. A and lot then, of learning. And then look at number five there, Kyle Larson. I think if anybody was going to try to pick a favorite, you see how much dirt racing experience and how many wins he has on dirt. You've got to look at this guy, Kyle Larson. But those are in sprint cars. Clint. But the experience is what I just saw right there. You see him on the bottom of the racetrack, down on the brown. That's traction. He's, he's got his left sides down there, finding grip. Now he's moved up. But when he was down there, he really caught uh, Truex fast right there. And that's just a product of having a dirt experience and knowing where to be on the racetrack. So in addition to the cup regulars, there are some dirt track, I guess we don't call them ringers, uh, like we do on the road course. You might be able to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, with all the rain that we had yesterday, you're going to see this track being soft. It'll have some holes in it. It's just inevitable. It's going to, to be that way. But this hats off to this crew. They've done a phenomenal job of getting this track prepared because I'm telling you it poured. I was going to say especially after all the rain that they had yesterday I think their goal is to have it black slick so that it's about how the driver sets the car into the corner uses the throttle how the team sets up the car but I think it's going to be pretty challenging to, to navigate this especially from a driver's standpoint here riding on board Christopher Bell guy also tons of uh, dirt experience I expect him to be really good but when they hit those areas that are soft the car grabs it it bounces and lurches up in the air but then it's black slick and, and the car just goes sideways when you get out of it let's take a lap with him and just listen to him work the throttle well, that's enough well, and you saw how, oh man, he's digging up a little dirt there coming off the track. You heard, he only got wide open for maybe a split second. I wouldn't be surprised, Clint, they never really get wide open because of how much power they have and how little grip there is in the rear tire. Well, you can hear him pedaling it really bad, and you can see how black slick it is already off the corners. That's because of all that wheel spin that you hear. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And going back to that tire that I showed you, and I talked about all about the edges. That's where you got to take care of that thing. Keep them tires rolling. Don't be spinning them because you're going to knock those edges off, and that's grip. Well, when you hit the gas and spin the tires, that rubber has to go somewhere, and it's going into the racetrack. A lot of dirt tracks will rubber up. They'll actually take rubber, and the thing will pick up. It's always weird when a track rubbers up how they... You always know it because you'll be sitting there in the grandstands and wow, wow, wow. The track will get quiet. Everybody's out there and it's really, really quiet because there's no more wheel spin. That's how much grip comes into the racetrack. So, guys, you've talked about spinning the wheels and not getting wide open throttles. Since we're having practice, I talked to several of the engine tuners this week, and you have the mapping process with the electronic control unit that controls the electronic fuel injection. You can tune the engine through that. One of the things that they're going to try either in this practice or the next practice is actually taking some of the top end leaving the top end power alone but taking some of the bottom end away just so it doesn't have all that power when the when the driver goes to the throttle trying to detune it on the lower end great point larry i tell you barry wright the old legendary barry wright b-dub he first race we ever won with him was a big money race he pulled the secondaries off the carburetor off the four barrel really yeah, ran on a two barrel i'm like barry what are you doing Trust me, kid, and went out and wore them out. <laughs> hey, guys, I, I want to give props not just to the track prep, but to these drivers. We are, how many minutes into this practice? Our 15 minutes. We've had, not had a single car or driver spin out yep. yet. I mean, this is foreign to a lot of these guys, but it shows you how talented these cup drivers are. Alex Bowman, fastest so far over Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson. He's got her hung out. Yeah, he does. And moving forward, that usually doesn't go hand in hand. If you're hung out like that, you're usually doing just that. You're hung, and you can't put the throttle down. He's moving forward doing it, so car's rotating well. Kevin Harvick was 14th fastest after his first run and said this. Steps are fine. Just way too sideways. Just sliding on the entry, sliding through the middle. Just not enough rear grip. Like, it needs a lot of rear grip compared to what I just drove. 
I'm a little surprised because I expected a lot of these guys to have trouble getting the, the front to yeah. the front to turn I agree. Uh, as they enter into these high banks. But right now, these track conditions making those well, cars Well, you saw lose. that a lot in the trucks that we just got done watching. The trucks couldn't turn. These guys seem to be turning well. Be tightening them up. Alex Bowman, fastest so far. Build Bristol Motor Speedway on dirt. 2,000 truckloads. They tested all over the region and used GPS on the bulldozers and graders uh, to get it accurate and get the banking, the slightly progressive banking they wanted top to bottom. We said that dirt came from Lloyd's. Lloyd used to be our caterer uh, for Fox <laughs> at the tracks. He lives in Bluff City. <laughs> I knew there was an inside joke in there somewhere. <laughs> Didn't come from the kitchen now. And it. you knew it has some history behind it. Yep. So we're going to hear from uh, Kurt Busch and then Alex Bowman. Spike in the brake at max compression. So that's where it touched a little bit. After that, it did not happen. Overall, well, rotation through the center because i got to keep spiking the brake to try to get something to turn. So overall, it's a little too tight in my book. But uh, just trying to get used to the forward drive as well. Um, but once I get it to rotate, like, I don't have any side getting into the corner. I load the right rear, and if I carry speed into the corner once it's slicked up like they do, I end up kind of, like, flowing through the bottom. Like, I can't stick the right rear on entry. Boy, this is all so new. I, and different. I, I love this dirt lingo and the difference in how they communicate on a dirt track versus these paved tracks that we're so used to. Debris in turn one uh, has us under caution. 40 to go in this practice session. Sunday, we're going to give you a chance to win Clint's money. $25,000 in the Fox Bet Super 6 Stage 2 contest. you got to download the app. You have to pick six race outcomes about Stage 2 for your chance at a part of $25,000. It's free. So don't miss out. Free to play. play 25000 How come you're smiling so big? Giving up Giving on my money? Because I like people, they, Jeff. I like it. They shot the picture before they told them it was six <laughs> <money>. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stuart Friesen moves up from the uh, Camping World Truck Series uh, to run this race for Spire Motorsports in the 77. He has quite, had two truck wins, including Eldora, most recent winner there. And uh, he was a standout in the Dirt Modifieds, the DIRT Modifieds in the Northeast. And you see that on the front of his car. That's a diaper, if you will. It's, it's an outerwear is what they call that. And that's uh, keeping the dirt and debris mud out of the radiator. It's not a block. It's it's an uh, outerwear that's just a so that fine filter is so what that like is. So it's like a filter. Let's yeah. air through. I just, man, I'd be worried that thing. Block up. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, almost, I mean, I understand you don't want other types of debris to get in there and clog up the radiator. Once that happens, you're done. Typically He's, runs on your air cleaners. And they made one for the front of these cars to try. Well, he's got his hands full this week because not only is he running the truck race, so is his wife. See that that see hole right. has knocked the front right front in on that car already. You're going to see that. That's that's a product of them holes getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, and, and when we listen to some of these guys talking about the right front digging in or the, you know, what's happening to get that car to turn, now we're back to mechanical grip, guys. We talk about arrow all the time. We're not going to be talking about arrow. We're going to be talking about mechanical grip. And this is a, a great up, uh, up close slow motion shots are awesome with yeah. this dirt and mud flinging around. You can I tell you it. what, we're talking about that filter, but I'm talking about that right front damage. That's going to be very, very tricky to keep the, these cars digging. Down to your point, Jeff, with the mechanical grip, you got to get that, that motion. The motion is grip. Yes. Getting over on that right front to get the turn that you're seeing with these cars, but you can't be too far because if it digs in and damage, you're going to be out of the race. And, guys, to that outerwear piece on that grill that you were looking at, talking to a lot of teams this week, they Velcro those on there. That way they can easily change them, especially in the race on Sunday during the stage breaks. They just pull it off, put another one up on there. It's like a good old pair of pins, right? Fresh diaper, <laughs> ready to go to the race. <laughs> All right. What, I don't get this. You go to a dirt track. Everybody's going to get dirty. Who do you bring as your sponsor? Tide. Of course. Oh, that's right. the best sponsor here. Regan. 
Mike, I can guarantee you we're all going to be using Tide after today with all the dust flying around down here. 43 car, Barrick Jones, you see him right now, just rolling back in on the racetrack. They had an issue with that car initially in practice, so motor kept shutting on, turning off on him. Didn't know why they came in, diagnosed it, found out the battery was actually coming plugged and unplugged. So I got to imagine that's something to do with as rough as this racetrack is, maybe a little oversight that uh, ultimately they're lucky they found today. I show you Kurt Busch at work here. And that's Chris Windham, who's a USAC champion, running some, you know, done a lot of dirt racing. I think Kurt was expecting him to get off in the corner a little <laughs> bit more. No, it's like this. Go faster. And this is going to be interesting. You see him, they're all digging for the bottom. This is kind of like the old Bristol. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you, the fun be, is going to be back. It, the, the fun aspect of this, Woo. and this is why I cannot wait to watch this race. If I'm a fan, I want to be in the grandstands. If I can, I'm going to be on my couch tuned in to us. Look at that. They oh, did Kurt tore him up. Back. Now, something I saw, Clinton, you and I have talked about this. When Kurt Busch had to jump on the brakes right there, that car turned left because what these teams are being able to do is, is maybe not shut it off completely, but adjust the brake bias from right front to left front to help that car rotate if you tap the brakes. Until you need to do it in Until a hurry. Until you need to get on the brakes hard. Now, here's Spinning a pair out. of dirt track eyes. you got Ricky Stenhouse out in front of uh, uh, Austin Dillon, who won a modified race here last weekend, last week. And this is what I was, I didn't finish my point. Imagine that, guys. Wait, we're so I didn't finish my All right. So what I was saying is that anticipation. If I'm sitting out here with my buddy, and he's drinking a beer, saying, hey, I'm going to go up there to the run the restroom. I'm watching these guys go. He's holding that crowd up, just like the days of old at Bristol. That's going to be the Spinner, turn two. Is. Martin Truett. Told you. <laughs> Took him 30 minutes, man. I, I expected it to happen much sooner. Now, he's double dipping. He's running the truck race as well as the cup race and uh, had a spin in practice in the truck as well. Let's take a look, see what happened. Here's coming off of turn four. So Chris Busher ahead. He, 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 he floats it up top there. You that can see how, hot. look how dusty and dirty it is up there. Not a lot of grip until you clean that off. And that's because they're all running around the bottom. When they get up and start moving around, you're gonna clean this track up. It'll widen up. Then you'll be back to racing side by side. Well, Clint, how do you know where the limit is if you don't do that at least once? That's exactly how you find it. <laughs> Just don't hit anything. Right. Jeff and I found it yesterday, uh, as a matter uh, of fact. <laughs> Mike. Talk about a diaper. I didn't do very good, Mike. Well, I, <laughs> I was needing a diaper yesterday. I was Clint's passenger. We'll tell you more about that yeah. on Sunday. You mean in the car, not on the grill? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He was wishing he wasn't. <laughs> Have you ever ridden with Clint? <laughs> it was my, I guess it's payback. You know, I never had an opportunity to pay him back. That's exactly I, had it. I was going to have to wreck myself, but I was going to pay him back. Oh, boy. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> All right, what are we looking for from Ch Chase Elliott's fifth quickest? What are we looking for from the defending champ here this weekend? Well, one of the things I like about Chase Elliott is how d d uh, diverse he is on all the different types of cars. He, he hasn't done a lot of dirt racing, but he's driven a lot of different cars, and he has done some dirt racing, some midgets, actually, uh, on dirt over the offseason. But he's just a talented race car driver with a, with a very good race team, and he's got teammates in Alex Bowman and Larson that have a lot of experience. I expect Chase Elliott to be strong this weekend. A couple of guys I've noticed pay, no, pay little attention to the timing because cars that came out late, working traffic, Austin Dillon, you saw he's one. J.J. Yaley is another. Yeah, we're, we're doing a little dirt farming of our own here as practice rolls on. J.J. Yaley in the 53 this week was passing a bunch of cars and then went for a spin at turn four. Everything looked perfect, and then it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. That's how quick it happens on dirt. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said that to myself. Man, everything was going so good <laughs> until it wasn't. You're going to see a lot of that Sunday for sure. So we're about halfway through this practice session, and uh, let's get Chase Elliott's thoughts after his last run. I honestly can't tell a, a huge difference other than maybe I just have a little more drive, just in general. 
like is it, you know, back tire is a little more hooked up. I can't tell if that's the changes or, you know, it's the track, to be honest. A lot of conversation, and that, that's what I love about this challenge coming here. All the different theories and philosophies on setups, springs, shocks. Larry, I mean, what are these crew chiefs talking and telling you uh, about when, and all the fun and excitement they're having trying to set up for this race? Yeah, it, it's almost a little bit of a crew chief's nightmare because Chase nailed it right there. That's what a lot of crew chiefs told me this week is, you know, we want to make changes to the car, but the track changes at such a rapid pace. And that's also going to be the challenge in the race on Sunday for those two stage breaks when you're going to be adjusting on these race cars is are you adjusting to what your driver's telling you that the car's doing or is the track going to change and throw that adjustment out of kilter? It, it's really a crap shooting. Back to the nine car, Chase Elliott, I've been watching his throttle. He never goes more than 75% wide open on neither wow. straightaway on no lap. Hey, I would think your mentality is, needs to be about a 75%. 100% is <laughs> going to get you in trouble on a racetrack like this. Boy, that turn one looks awfully bumpy right now. Well, is what I'm seeing is it's starting to come apart a little bit. Right where your right rear goes, if you see that getting into one, is developing a hole. That's because of that weather, in my opinion, these heavy cars. We knew that this was a, a potential that's going to happen. You'll see this thing get in, and it's right where the right rear is, where those cars load up. Right, boom, right there. There's another one. Sometimes, Jeff, when a track's this slick, that's a little bit of side bite. Kind of look for those at times. Oh, you know? yeah, but you're looking just... for those dark yeah. areas because that's grip, right? If there's there's moisture in that area. It's not black and dry and, and dusty, but you, you got to have, have a car that can get over. So not only are these crew chiefs having all these other challenges, they also have to set these cars up to handle those bumps. Look at that. That looks like somebody dug a hole for a foundation. And all that is is just the water that, that yep. gets retained in they there. They did. There's about 40 of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Suarez did a 31-lap run trying to uh, adjust and adapt. Seat time. He is uh, 23rd quickest. See Kyle Larson right here. He's, man. Yeah, he's got the best five... No, sorry, best 10 and 15 lap average so far. Guys, you were talking about William Brown in that 24 going through the bumps. I, I've got all types of camera shots of the track surface. I'm looking at three different shots, and it's like I'm looking at three completely different racetracks. That's how much different it varies, which is the other challenge about trying to make changes to make the car better. And that's a product of that rain. Going right back to the rain, it's inconsistent. Now you've got a little bit some soft spots that you're trying to work over. Um, you know, and that's inconsistent with these crews and you're hearing the communication with the drivers, the feedback that they're giving them. This track is ever changing. So they're trying to keep up with it in practice. Can you imagine 250 laps on this thing on Sunday? <laughs> Just saw Ty Dillon up in uh, turn two get way up and out of the groove, kicked up a huge bunch of dirt, uh, a bunch of dust that is, and that's for pit road for some changes. Now, this is pretty typical, in my opinion, when you have practice and, and cars aren't starting side by side. You're going to clean up that bottom groove. It's going to be the preferred line. I promise you folks, as soon as they line these things up for heat races, you're going to blow off that middle and top groove, and you're going to have, if it stays like this where it's black slick, man, you're going to have multiple grooves. It's you're going to want to be third instead of second. <laughs> <laughs> On a restart, it definitely... I think it's going to be line sensitive. If it gets like this and it's just on the bottom for a little while, it's going to be really, really slippery, you know, slick on the outside and have trouble. Restarts. Suarez back out on track. He and Cody Ware are the only drivers to make runs of 20 laps or more. Well, and that tells you a lot. If you compare Suarez and Cody Ware to, say, like a Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson went out there, ran two laps, came in, ran three laps, came in, four laps, came in, before he started making longer runs, and that's because he knows what he wants and what he needs in that car. These guys are searching. They're like, I have no idea. Let me go make a bunch of laps. And it takes me right back to your question at the top of the show, Mike, how everybody utilized their practice getting ready for this and prepare themselves. A guy like Suarez, he made wasn't in that race last week. I have one out there. Give me some laps, Jack. That's what I want. I need seat time. All right. This is the first of two practice sessions for the cup drivers today.
Well, let's jump in the Wayback Machine. Boy, NASCAR used to be back in the good old days. Remember when racing was great? Well, when Richard Petty won that last race on dirt, he won it by two laps. <laughs> there were two lead changes. John Sears led a while at the half-mile Raleigh Fairground. Then uh, Benny Parsons led a bunch in LG DeWitt's car. And once Richard Petty took the lead, he never looked back and had a two-lap margin at the finish. You know, the sad part is, Jeff, we would have had to gone back and watch that race. He didn't do that. No, he knew it. No, he I would have had to look it up exact... on the internet. He didn't even have to do <laughs> no, that. He knew, he, he knew exactly what happened. He remembered it. I can't remember how I got here. <laughs> I I mean, I, not I, to I, Bristol. I want to know if the king was giving Eric Jones some tips about racing on well, dirt. You remember who drove this number back in the day? And his numbers look just like Richard Petty's, just in reverse order. Another Hall of Famer, Wendell Scott. Ah, oh, yes. There you go. Yes. And he was good on dirt. All right, Regan on one of the pre-weekend favorites. Well, that's right, Mike. Austin Dillon, somebody that we all expected to see towards the top of the board. Things not going quite so well early for him right now, though he's 32nd on the board right now. Just bumped himself up a couple positions. Actually, they've been struggling to get that race car to point straight for him. He can't get it to point straight soon enough so that he can get that run down the straightaway. So a lot of work's been going on in this car. They are making some small gains with it, but they need to keep going and uh, finding a little bit more for the driver who was the inaugural of Dora Dirt Race and the Truck Series winner. Thanks, Regan. Now, here's uh, Stuart Friesen. He's not afraid to hang it out. No. Well, I, whoa. Ooh. Bit right there. And yeah, to correct. But going back to, to what you heard him say, and it wouldn't point. In my opinion, it go, takes me right back to Jeff talking about all the different strategies, the mentality of what crew chief think that they want for this. you got to remember, nobody's ever seen this. It's a think game. This is nothing more than throwing darts and hoping that this works. I feel like forward bite, I said forward bite's going to be such a crucial issue. I bet you that they were working on forward bite and took the focus off because if you're forward bite, if you have good dig off the corner, that's going to be at the expense of turn in the middle of the corner. you got to find a happy balance there. But Clint, let me take you back to Chase Elliott's question. How do you know is it the car that needs adjustment or did the track change? Well, that's what you love about dirt racing. A little <laughs> bit of both. <laughs> exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level with you guys. I'm really wishing I was out there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a this, fun gig, and you guys are a lot of fun, boys. Yeah, but but that's a whole I lot would more sure fun. like to be I, down there complaining <laughs> about my race car right now. I'll be honest. I, I haven't missed it a whole lot since I retired. I'm with you on this. I, I miss this. I wish this had been around when I was driving because this is cool. I love racing on the dirt and just didn't get back to it enough when I came to Cup. And, uh, man, I would have loved to have done this. Well, if you were in the 24 right now, Jeff, you would be, it'd be a whole lot of shaking going on. Look at this. Well, they don't have these kind of bumps on iRacing. William Byron's no. like, wait a minute, <laughs> what line is this? Uh, you know, what that's a product of, I think, Clint, you see the right front's soft, the left rear's very soft, trying to get that drive off, right? You want the car to squat down the back. It's just real soft, so it's not controlled maybe enough with the shocks and so that car when it hits those ruts and that moisture and you see that bump right there off of turn four and it just really goes yeah. back and forth right front the other thing i saw right there is exactly what austin Dillon said he didn't have and needed more of with his car that car he's just moving up in the fluff right there a little bit but go, he got pointed good and got dig when, when i talk about dig it's exactly what you just said i used to say it all the time on the radio i need to get that left rear tire down a track like martinsville i need to get that left rear tire down and dig straight off the corner. Now you see how black the, this track is getting? Here is Kurt Busch's crew talking about the track rubbering up. You know, loud right here. You have to think that this point is starting to rubber up, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely doing something like that based on what the tires are doing. Yeah, like obviously it's past slick. It's starting to take rubber because it's kind of a bluish tint. I don't know much about it, but you would think with the speeds the way they are, it's not getting any slicker. It's got to be going the other way. It's not rubbering up. I can tell you why, too. Lap times are still going down. If this rubbers up, lap times are going to pick up. That's right. All of the top 25 fastest laps uh, were set in the first five laps of this practice. 
That's going to be interesting when we move forward to Sunday, you know, tire strategy. Who's going to put tires on when they are? We're seeing fall off right here. I don't know where my crew chief's at. If he's eating ice cream in there, working on my rig. But what's our fall off look like, crew chief? How am I doing? Well, Clint, they got us in a box Sunday, buddy. <laughs> the only time you're going to get tires at the end of stage one, end of stage two. Other than that, I'll just be enjoying my ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, the pit procedure will be very different on Sunday. You cannot gain or lose a spots on pit road on a normal pit stop sequence between stages. Chase Elliott, watch those hands. He's hard at work here. With 12 minutes to go in the opening round of practice. We'll have another practice for you a little later on here on FS1. For some of these drivers, first time they've been <coughs> on dirt. My white sneakers are not going to end well this weekend. Did you forget where you came from? You brought white sneakers? <laughs> I oh bring white God. sneakers every week, but I'm not wearing them. To a dirt truck? I'm, like, I, I'm getting my dirt shoes. I got I got dedicated sprint car, late model, dirt, dirt shoes. Dirt edition. Come on. I started wow. on dirt, man. My first race was that on dirt. That is a really cool picture. <laughs> they, I got to tell you, that car, we called it the How many flat. times you do that in your career? <laughs> My gosh. Oh, it was cool That's being able to carry that, that checkered so, flag around. So glad you brought Is that a Cobra on the front of your car? Uh, it absolutely was. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah, the, the, that was a, a rice chassis out of California. It's about what it was like. Well, racing I'm against you, only. too, a Cobra on the racetrack. <laughs> I got bit only. by that thing one time in Phoenix. Hey, that? Hey, hey, look at this guy. So, uh, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Clint, <laughs> a young Clint Boyer This old sport's been hard on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I got to say. <laughs> hey, true story. That fire suit right there, I didn't yep. know where it went. And a guy called me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, I've got this fire suit. Would you like it? I'm like, send me a picture of it. I I well, can't believe it. it. I got it back, and I can't fit in it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come up with 79? The year I was born. That's when we all raced together. I had both brothers uh, and I race. And, you know, in motocross, it's all across the board, run in different classes, yeah. modified stock. Uh, we all had different uh, motorcycles. My dad was keeping up with eight, nine okay. motorcycles. So he just said, hey, we're going to keep this simple. You're, you're born. I plus, love plus, that was easy. That's probably his computer password, too. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I, that's good to know, Mike. Uh, but, you know, it's cool. He's keeping that tradition going in his family because yes. his son, Cash, yeah. born in 14. He's number 14. Of course, his dad. That was 14. Look at here. Too. All right. Cool. Oh, you know, hey, guys, I said I don't know if you could wear those tires out. I, I lied. Regan? Well, you guys see the third tire from the bottom right there. That is the right rear tire off the 24 of William Byron. Ninth on the board right now. Just finished up his practice. We're hearing a lot of chatter about guys starting wow. to lose forward drive. These tires are wearing out. That's a beautiful sight in my eyes. Absolutely. Wow. Man, I wish we'd have that on the asphalt uh, tracks like that. But that is going to be, we were talking about that forward bite, the traction, the throttle that these guys are carrying. Larry is saying he only had 70% throttle. You're going to have to treat that old throttle like it's got an egg underneath of it be easy on the gas keep those tires rolling because if you wear them things out that's massive lap time well, wait a minute i thought i thought we weren't supposed to be able to wear these tires out uh yeah that, that's why i'm not a crew chief right because <laughs> that's okay. what i thought Stick to driving i Jeff. thought these things are pretty hard but uh man i'm gonna tell you that was eye-opening to see those tires well here's the bad thing that was only 36 laps on those tires well, the other thing is, you know, you look at tire wear. Usually, we always talk about this. You go to an asphalt track. We just saw it at Nashville Speedway this week. They were over there testing, was wearing those tires out. We know on a concrete asphalt track, it'll only get better. Here, not the case. It's okay. just going to keep wearing out. Chase Briscoe, this is a guy I've got my eye on this weekend because if you look at the dirt background that he has, a lot of open wheel racing, but he's run ARCA cars, yep. big, heavy stock cars on dirt because that series runs on dirt. I think uh, this is a guy that I expect to, to do really well. In needing a, a good run. You know, he needs a shot in the arm, some confidence for him and his team. This is a huge opportunity for them this weekend, and I look, I agree. I think he'll shine. And I bet he came in with some confidence, so that's, mm -hmm. that's a good plus. Here's another guy, dirt background, Ryan Newman. Again, uh, you know, 
all, like I look at myself, my dirt background was open wheel cars, maybe a wing on top. You ran full fender, more, you know, not stock cars, late models, you know, modifieds, all that stuff. Huge difference. Those cars are built for dirt. These yeah. cars are not at all. Not at all. I mean, this is a, hey, they call them stock cars for a reason. And I'm telling you, compared to a dirt car that runs on a track like this, these things are box stock, in my opinion. Not a lot of suspension, not a lot of travel. Those are all things that create grip. Now you saw Kyle Busch up there in what you call it, the fluff, fluff. and uh, Martin Truex got, gets right underneath him, drives right away. Hey, hey he's still in it. Oh, no cushion there's, there, homie. Get down. No grip up there. It's going to take more than one Kyle Busch to, <laughs> to get the fluff. <laughs> and they that will. Is, you know, restarts so and slick. things like that. They're just going to keep widening that track out. Hey, I've been watching Brad Keselowski. This is a guy came in here. I don't even know if he did a whole lot of prep. Has no dirt experience not even sure how much he was looking forward to but he's a champion he's a great race car driver and he's showing it right here he's doing a nice job keeping the car nice and straight right around the bottom running some, running some great laps but i wouldn't be following kyle bush i know kyle bush is another champion really well but i'd be out there following the five ball one of these guys at the top of the board in, in the heat that's the guy that i need to follow and learn as much as i can your point, Brad Kozlowski has one dirt late model start last week in Georgia. A week from tomorrow, MLB is back on FS1. The Braves face Bryce Harper and the Phils, and the Dodgers take on the Rockies on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Final four minutes of practice. Uh, that's, uh, that's Terry Ford down there on our camera at inside of turn three. Did we not gear him up for, for a dirt race? Man, we got to cover him in a poncho, goggles. Hey, I tell you, he's going to appreciate that he had those ear, the headphones on. <laughs> yep. At least his ears aren't going to be full of dirt. Oh, we have a caution. Put it out. Four, and it's J.J. Yaley. Same song, second verse. JJ, another guy. Got a lot of dirt back, uh, you know, experience. Yep, USAC, triple USAC champ. There's what happened. You can see just come around on it. It was already gone. That, it's almost exactly what we've seen happen earlier. Man, I want to say thank you. I know Bruton's watching. Thank you, Bruton. You let us come in here. We're making a mess out of your place, <laughs> but we're having a lot of fun doing it. Good luck cleaning this place up when we leave. Regan, who's quick? Well, Mike, we're down here. Uh, Alex Bowman, number one, position one after practice so far, Alex. Number one, how good is your race car? And how much fun is that on the racetrack right now? Yeah, it's a lot of fun for sure. Um, pretty happy with our ally Camaro. Everybody at HMS worked really hard at guessing, I guess, on the, the dirt side of things and just trying to use a little bit of knowledge that we do have. So um, it's a lot of fun, and it's a blast around here. It's going pretty well so far, which I think is, is really good. Um, I feel like on long runs we're lacking. It's like I just kind of burn the right rear off and can't stick the right rear kind of center off, can't make any drive, but we'll keep working on it. Um, obviously happy to be P1 after practice, but we definitely have some work to do. You told me right before we came to air, or before we came on camera, we should have done this years ago. It's so much fun. I love what I heard right there has to take care of these tires. It's been a long time. As we transition and keep going, evolve with the tires and the program and the cars, the setups that we have, today's day and age, it's almost a qualifying lap every time because that tire is so good on an asphalt track that it just doesn't wear out as a course. These things takes me right back to the old days when I first came into this sport where you had to take care of those tires because you can make your money on both sides of the run. And that, to me, is where experience on dirt is going to pay off for some of these guys like Austin Dillon we're riding on board here. There's some guys that maybe, you know, a chance quicker, but their wheel spinning really, really bad. Like you look you look pretty good. Like food wise, looks like you could have a little bit more turn, but all the guys are all crooked as hell on the corner. Like they're gonna blow tires. Good to know that's kind of what I was hoping for. <laughs> Well, and, and that goes back to, you know, drive. We keep talking about drive off, hooking up the rear tires. Driving that car straight is definitely going to take better care of those tires long term. Cole Custer in this final minute of practice. 
He finished sixth in a truck race uh, at Bristol. Tell you what, his concept consecutive lap uh, average is pretty solid, pretty sporty right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's second to Larson on the consecutive. His teammate uh, Briscoe is, is well too. Second uh, looks like on average for, for Briscoe. So big turnaround, big opportunity for Stuart Haas Racing. They've been beat up pretty yes. bad. It's, uh, I want to I want to talk about that old 14 car, right? <laughs> Best consecutive 15 lap averages in the lower left, led by Kyle Larson, who has wins in truck, Xfinity, Cup, the Rolex 24 hours, and just about every dirt track race ever. Tyler Reddick, yes. another one that I feel like is going to be really competitive this weekend, already showing it. You see that in his lap average. He did really well the other night. Uh, I drove that iRacing car. I don't know if you watched. I didn't make I, the I feature did, I didn't see because it. I didn't do a very good job <laughs> taking care of my tires. Mike. I was on the broadcast. I didn't see you make any laps. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> deep shots fired. You didn't try to kill me yesterday in the car on the track. <laughs> All right. We'll be back to wrap this up. First round of practice is complete. We'll have another round for you here after the trucks have their chance at the track. Alex Bowman quickest overall lap, and his lap was faster than the first 17 poles on the paved Bristol Motor Speedway. Well, this track was new, so a little bit more of working the track and uh, you know, we have Alex Bowman quickest, and let me look at this uh, lineup of the fastest laps in the second half of practice. Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, Martin Truex, Ryan Newman. And this is the point in practice where I start paying attention. Even down there in the car, if I'm looking at my board and the guys are doing their work, I'm looking at that because... A, they've learned the racetrack, they've made right. the adjustments, now they're putting tires on, and they've got their bullet shaped. I'm a kid, like on Christmas morning, Mike, <laughs> I'm having so much fun just seeing all the different things, all the different philosophies of setups, driving style, learning the track, how it's evolving and changing, and, uh, and seeing which guys are excelling at this and, and doing it for the first time. So much fun. This is cool. So now everybody's had a chance to see what works, what doesn't, and how tires wear. We're going to have some race hub for you, then truck final practice, and then cup final practice. And we'll see who's quick. All right, I heard Clint say this is the time where he starts.